Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Richard Lewis Show. I'm your host, Richard Lewis, and today I'm joined by somebody I've been flirting with doing a podcast with for, oh, I'll say about two fucking years. Uh, <laughs> and he's always had something to do because he is one of the most ubiquitous and unique members of the Dota 2 talent pool. It is, of course, Sir Action Slacks. I'm sure you've seen him in many things, uh, not least of all TI, which um, sadly isn't, uh, isn't happening at the moment due to you know that's on screen by the way what it is <laughs> yeah. oh shit so, oh no <laughs> it's all right don't worry we can edit it in post probably no i keep it in all right yeah, okay. people need to know i love podcast intros it's just a straight up like yes give it to me it's better oh. than the dota fails ones though like i mean oh, those, yes, those have those a tendency to go all over the place <laughs> is, I, I want to ask actually this wasn't going to be the first question but while we're here is neil uh, okay Neil is not okay. Neil is out of his goddamn mind. I mean, the depression from uh, losing so many viewers to Dota What the Fuck has drawn him insane. Uh, Neil has lost it. So, uh, yeah, shout out to him and uh, the boys at Dota Cinnamon. Rest in peace, boys. (laughs) Well, he, he puts in so much work on those videos now. Like, I've watched him. Like, I haven't watched the show religiously for yeah. years. You know, with those little animations that he puts in. Like, he puts so much work into those. I mean, they're he obviously the, the product of a deranged mind. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think as the show's got higher in quality, you're right. There seems to be a little... It's lost a little bit of its viewership. Not much, though. I think it's still... No, no. Gets- it, it's all Suns fan. Uh, my, my co-host of uh, Fails the Week, he is a, a real lazy piece of shit. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's all him, unfortunately. And Neil is just dragged down in the pits of despair with him. So very sad. But Mr. Lewis, yes. so happy to be here. Longtime fan of uh, you and uh, your friends there. Mm. Oh, you know, I don't know shit about Counter Strike. I don't know anything about anything but Dota. Dota is very much quarantined from everything else. But yeah, uh, yeah it is what a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's good, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking, uh, especially now, right? Because I think. Um, been a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on a lot of serious stuff you know some Mm. not so serious stuff you know i'll I'll start with the ti kind of kind of not happening and and you know kind of what a a blow it is uh uh, for the scene and kind of the calendar obviously nothing you nothing you can do because it's a global pandemic but it feels really weird in the in the dota landscape to not have that kind of jewel in the crown, essentially, to look mm-hmm. forward to this year. And I, I obviously, I know you were shooing to work it. Yeah. So, how, yeah, yeah. Of course. So, <laughs> so how, how's, it, how's it been for you and all of the friends uh, that you have in the talent pool? Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Um, for uh, I know a lot of your audience is not a uh, Dota fan, so I'll mm. give you a little uh, background. Actually, we, 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 we just to make it clear, we, we all play Dota together on Discord. Really? I mean, I've got like oh. 4,000 hours in Dota now. Like, <laughs> so... Oh. Yeah, we gotta we gotta party up, dog. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Ti is is as you said, like the ground the crown jewel of the entire esports scene in Dota. We don't really spread out prize pool at all. I mean, it very much is our one thing that we have in Dota is the international and it's gigantic prize pool. It's the only thing that keeps us in people's minds. Mm. And uh, you win Ti, you become a, a super millionaire. And uh, the entire scene is built around that. In fact, a lot of tournament organizers that I talk to uh, hate TI because a team doesn't go to your event unless they can win a million dollars. And the scene would be so much healthier if TI didn't exist. But it is the one thing that Dota has because it has zero advertising, has zero other stuff. And uh, it is uh, a pillar of how we as a community express ourselves. We are elitists in Dota. We think that we're the best, and we made the biggest prize pool in esports, and it is ours, and we pay. I for have it. noticed, yes. Yeah, so uh, it is very hard. It is losing the elitist part of our community for an entire year, and people are taking it pretty tough. Um, as far as working it, whew, thank God. So TI is the uh, the most brutal week of my life. Um, I uh, helped Valve with uh, making content for the international. Mm. Uh, they gave me that opportunity after I sent them basically a, a pitch at TI8 and said, hey, I think our content sucks at TI. Here's why, and here's why I think we should change it. And so uh, they gave me that opportunity to work with them for a couple years making that content, and the team over there is incredible. But... Yeah, Corona sucks ass. Uh, we yeah. were working on TI9, or excuse me, TI10 content for a good six months. Everything lined up, everything ready to go. And then Roni, it, it's all gone. Like every idea is gone now. So it's tough. But if there's one thing that I do know about the boys at Valve, the boys at the film team, is that they'll bounce back and we'll have a great event later. It's going to suck though because TI lined up with the years. 
yeah. 2001 TI1, 2009, you know, and now it's, it's screwed. Now mm-hmm. TI10 will happen in uh, uh, 2021. It's over for us. So, yeah, that sucks a lot. But well, I don't know. The whole – oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say that. Is there, is there an argument here? Because right, right now there's a lot of kind of disgruntled sentiment in, in, mm-hmm. in the Dota 2 community. We'll, we'll, we'll expand on that in a, in a bit. But um, is there an argument to say, you know, we've seen big leagues like, you know, the NBA and the NFL and things like this go ahead kind of in the bubble situation. Yeah you know, where players are independently tested, it's all hermetically sealed, you don't have a crowd, but the tournament goes on. Now, mm-hmm. for most esports events, it's not really an option because the money isn't there. You know, if you pull in a half a million dollar sponsorship for a regular esports tournament, you're doing pretty good. I mean, a lot of these events yeah. break even. That's the reality mm-hmm. of the esports economy. But for TI, we all know that while that prize pool is a big glittery, you know, fucking shining prize at the end of the rainbow, Valve are keeping seventy five percent of that shit. Yeah, and they could give up another twenty five, and and you're probably getting in the ballpark about what you would need to do for the event to go ahead in a bubble. And let's also be clear, they've kept seventy five percent of all the other ones. Yeah. So they've, you know, do they have an obligation to give a little bit back so Ti can go ahead? Is that a valid criticism? What a great, yeah. Uh, you know, I added up all the TI money that uh, Valve has made, uh, the 75%, not including prize pool, and they've made half a billion since TI won off, nice, of, uh, <laughs> off of just people uh, supporting them. And uh, yeah, so two part question here Do they have an obligation? <laughs> I mean, kind of. I don't think there's anybody out there that's buying Battle Pass stuff because they. Maybe a very small percent that actually give a shit about PI. They just want hats. Mm. And, uh, you know, you could say, like, oh, can we sue them for not putting on an event? And not really. They offered you hats, you bought them, and they said that they would put money into something. Right? Do they have to do that? Uh, technically not. Um, would it be a bad face thing to not do that? I think that's what we're seeing, you know? Mm. Um, something saying, like, yeah, we're going to use this year's thing to support the scene would be great. But then again, would you give up free money if you felt like it would have zero impact on what you do? I mean, that's the sad truth of gamers, my friend. Gamers want cosmetics. They want things. And I think that the very astute, oh, my God, I'm giving up on this game. Fuck you. That's like, ten at, at best, 10% of the uh, Dota 2 audience. The normal Dota 2 audience doesn't even care about esports. They go in, they play the game, they want shiny hats. Mm. So uh, from my perspective, it is one of the most important things in the world to me. Of, of course, I think that they should be supporting the seed. I don't know why there wasn't some kind of DPC plan for a month. I don't know all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you got to be smart and think it's 10%. I, I'm one of the 0.1% that gives a shit about this stuff. So why? Mm. And uh, I look at Counter-Strike as an example of a scene that didn't have support and then grew its own support. And it was really the community. Uh, It's quite the opposite in Dota. Uh, Valve is very invested into that. And that comes with perks, but that also comes with challenges. Like what's the DPC? Well, it's up to them. I mean, Counter-Strike just makes their own shit. Well, I mean, so that was going to be the next point I sort of segued Mm. into. And that is that it blows my mind. Like, listen, the Dota 2 subreddit has always been a weird zone for me like you know because because like the you know subreddit's are weird anyway i mean like reddit yeah. is designed to essentially be an echo chamber right it's like mm-hmm. every reddit user that has been programmed to care about karma is on an intellectual standing with a lab rat that knows if it presses a button it gets cheese or yeah. you know sugar or whatever it is right like the, it's just a number but, but people incredibly are invested in it and care about karma and there's something kind of fucked up about any platform where you only need five, a net five people to disagree with your opinion for your opinion to disappear and be deemed bad there's been right. multiple studies in reddit that show or the first three comments in a thread will dictate what everyone else says there's yeah. been, you know and, and, and so it's a consensus machine mm-hmm. and you know, it's weird watching Dota 2 people who consider themselves to be very intellectual, very high functioning, very, you know, as you said, they're very elitist. And yet you get to Reddit and it's a fucking nightmare. I mean, it, it is <laughs> the dumbest opinions uh, that are divorced from reality, repeated ad nauseum. 
And, you know, when I, I look at the kind of content that gets downvoted and never makes it there, mm -hmm. I look at the type of content that does. It's very like a lot, of, a lot of focus on memes and things that don't matter. And basically now you can divide the front page of the subreddit into memes or bitching. <laughs> That's, That's it. it. That's 100%. That is, yeah, right? So, so it blows my mind coming from Counter-Strike, where, as you said, we had to do for self. We basically mm -hmm. have kept the Counter-Strike scene artificially alive. Absolutely. By caring about it and investing our time in it and bringing outside sponsors and really pushing the game. Valve love Dota 2. It's their favorite mm -hmm. child. Doesn't mean it gets everything it wants, but it no. gets the most of all the children. You know, in TF2 and Left 4 Dead. I mean, even dead. Left, it, well, no, but even <laughs> Left 4 Dead 2 is getting more than TF2 right now. Oh, so it sad. Just, <laughs> and TF2 is like, they don't even let them eat at the table anymore. I don't no. know. What, he's outside crying, <laughs> bogging up the window. Can I come in, Daddy? Like, oh. It's fucked up, right? So anyway, when I see Dota people complaining, about how like the, the, the phrase that gets repeated by the morons at the moment is Valve have abandoned the game, abandoned mm. the battle pass. It's, it, it's patently absurd from where I'm sat. You're sat sure. in a very different position to me. What do you think of the criticism that the community is leveling at Valve that they don't care about the game? So communication's hard, right? And that's the reason that I think Valve never communicates with anybody is because why communicate anytime that you speak to somebody you're making a verbal contract with them for example a year ago they said hey we're working on the new player experience where is the new player experience well you've made a verbal contract that you're going to deliver on that but corona happened mm -hmm. so now do we have to make a new thing saying that we're not working on that now you have a whole new group of people and i think that valve's basic philosophy is don't like all communication is just shit unless it's done i remember the no man sky guy said you know, um, that a guy from Valve talked to him and said, don't talk anymore. Just mm. do shit. Do yeah. shit and present it and don't care. Um, I think that that's a pretty good philosophy in some ways. In other ways, it's you let people uh, get angry and questionable. Did you know that the amount of wars has decreased by something like 80% worldwide after the internet? Why? easy, fast communication and uh, intentions. Being able to share your intentions and know things makes people not create scenarios in their head. Scenarios like no one's working on Dota. There's no one in the office. No one's doing anything. Um, so you all have to have this measuring of, okay, do we have to communicate? And I think that that's where Valve typically sits. They never say anything unless they have to. Quite like the streamer situation uh, that we had a couple weeks ago from our top streamers uh, stealing, well, stealing, but uh, using games from tournament organizers. Yeah. Um, eventually, you have to say something, but why say something until you have to? That's the philosophy. Do I agree with that? Eh, I mean, maybe, but anyway, to get to your point, I think that this is just kind of the natural cycle of um, Dota and its community. Um, Valve and Dota don't do things unless they find out that it's something that community is making them do. They, if they had their lives perfect, they would just have Ice Frog, do updates, see what's broken, and fix it. But that is inherently the job of a community, is to keep a large corporation in check. I mean, a corporation, let's not kid ourselves, every single one is evil. They want to take as much of your money yep. as possible without giving you anything. Mm -hmm. And it is healthy for a community to say, Hey, F you, I deserve this. Is it stupid? Yes, 90% of the time. But would I want it to change? Probably not. I mean, that's the only way that you improve uh, in Dota and in, in life is uh, having people bitch and then fixing it. And that's the only balance that you have. So I wish they did more. And yeah. I wish they hired more fucking people so that they could do more. But everything's a trade-off, right? But So where's, where's the line then between, like you say, keeping the corporation honest and kind of like entitlement, you, you, you know, and whining? Because, again, I, I, I think you might have some valid criticisms uh, that you could level up Valve mm -hmm. for their treatment of Dota. Um, no doubt about it. That's fair. Sure. Right? But, I, you know, I, I've always – and, again, I have my own hang-ups and prejudices here because I remember the diatides – you know, fiasco. Oh. And that really colored me against the Dota 2 community. And it's like, sure. it, I've never really seen anyone, like I've never seen collective atonement for that. Like, you know, <laughs> uh, ne ne never There's at no all. atonement? They yeah. got what they wanted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, you, you doxed uh, Cyborg Matt, you know, you harassed 
fucking Volvo employees. <laughs> Volvo cars. You spammed a Barack Obama's presidential Facebook page. <laughs> you know, because there wasn't a fucking mode in a game that was never promised anyway. It was right. just something they did seasonally. And it's like, ever since then, it's like I, I sort of look over and see, well, what's, Dota, what's the Dota community <laughs> whining about today? And I just can't, it's like, I, it just feels ridiculous to me, the, the idea that Valve don't care. But well, yeah. I think because by virtue of you making it so it has the biggest prize pool in esports and it improves mm -hmm. upon itself year upon year, which it did again this year, which I was amazed by. I thought this was going to be the first year it Me did. Me too. Um, it, I, they, I think there's a sense of entitlement there. We do yes. this, so we deserve that. Exactly. That's why, as a content creator, you really should be careful to have something like a Kickstarter for a project. Yeah. You see, when you put people's money and they you give them ownership yes they will give you that but they also feel like this is mine and i owe it and then they constantly feel like they are the ones who get to steer the ship and that's such a hard thing to be able to mitigate as a large company is like okay these guys think that there should be uh you know advertising we need to make k-pop videos like league is that a good thing should we actually spend hundreds of millions of dollars in doing that. Definitely. Well, they feel like we should because they paid for the game. And it's such a different system with other games like that, you know? Uh, usually devs just make things, they uphold them, but like the Riot community isn't ever like, you guys need to do this, but Riot also does a fantastic job with their stuff, so they don't have to. But this is the big folly, I think, of Valve's philosophy. It's that we only react. Reacting is great, unless you have a giant problem. A problem that is so big that the community collapses on itself and goes insane like dire tide. Then by that time, reaction, it's over. It's a volcano and it's an embarrassment. And this is where companies like Blizzard and Riot with their weekly updates and letting the community know, make sure to put down that thing. Um, I've said it a lot of times before. I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but I- No, I no, I like rambling. It's good for the- <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And the companies are like, um, you know, uh, they're like banks and you have to- when you do something good for the community, they give you a deposit and uh, you keep that deposit. And sometimes you take withdrawals, artifact, you withdraw from that community goodwill. And if you don't keep making large deposits, eventually you're going to have a stock market crash and the bank's money is going to be worthless. So I think that's kind of what we're seeing right now in Dota. There's been way too many withdrawals from Valve and they need to do a large scale deposit. I'm sure that they thought that the battle pass this year was a large scale deposit, but again, you have entitlement. The community thinks that they paid for it, so it's theirs. So that's not a community uh, deposit. That is another withdrawal, and now we're seeing like this big problem. You mean you don't think female anti mage and hentai wind ranger were 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 enough? You think? I mean, and that's I, the other I thing too. It probably was. Yeah, <laughs> it probably. I, I, th I think was. it's. I think it's a pretty good fucking battle pass this time. Me around. too. Yeah, I think the content's great. I'm loving that they've brought back uh, the skeleton king. You know, old Leo, yeah. you know, it's... Uh, I agree with you. Yeah, but that's the thing is that comment. if every single person thinks that they own the Battle Pass, so 90% of people might like it, but if one guy thinks that he wanted an anime with a even bigger bazongas and more uh, kawaii, then that's a goddamn issue. And then he starts talking, five people, and then all of a sudden you have a top page Reddit thread that says Valve doesn't care because we didn't have our weeb anime girl. Mm. I mean, it's how the internet works. Um, question is, does it matter? Does yeah. the community bitching about anything actually matter? I mean, you're still making I think it, it does. I mean, money. from again, from where I'm sat, maybe yeah. a unique vantage point or a, a disadvantage point, depending on how you look at it. Mm. You know, I, I, I see Valve fix things based on front page Reddit posts. Right. So that so, says yeah. to me that even though they're not talking, they're watching and to a certain degree listening. Now in Counter-Strike, sure. what we're finding out at the moment is Turns out our entire online scene's been fucked for about five years because of <laughs> bugs that no one disclosed. It was all a lie. It was all yep. a shit show. Looks like Valve <laughs> might even take away coaches. And we got real problems around the corner. Like I heard. <laughs> yeah, 2020 is going to bend us over. Majors have been cancelled indefinitely. Well, it's you a, know, it's, it's still it's, better it's, than it, It's a joke. But <laughs> these things could have been fixed if Valve were as vigilant, I believe, as they are. Sure. So I see a front page post going, look at this interaction. It's like some fucked up unique interaction where it's like, if you're the Earthshaker Arcana and someone else is this and you do the <laughs> a fissure, they go invisible for a 
half a second. <laughs> Valve hot patched that the next day. It's like yeah. we we'd fucking kill for that in CS, and we would have avoided a lot of fundamental problems if that existed. Well, that's true, and uh, I guess that that is a uh, uh, a problem with their structure too. I mean, uh, you wouldn't get that from a Blizzard or a Riot because there'd be a thousand people working on the Counter Strike team for how successful it was. With but, Blizzard and Riot, they just they they'd have the mods delete the Reddit thread, ban the yes. account of the person that complained, and, and then make they a will send an assassin to saying, kill you. Yeah, well, <laughs> they're on their way to my house. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a problem, but it. It's constantly this chicken and the egg argument, right? If would Counter Strike be as good of, as it is if it wasn't for the team that put it that way? Would the freedom of letting them work how they work make these products that are so good? And then you have this other problem of okay, they have to upkeep them. I mean, the whole philosophy behind that company is let people work on what they're passionate on. Who's passionate about bug fixes, right? And who, if your passion leaves for TF2 then who's left there to pick up the pieces? And uh, yeah, it sucks ass, and I don't think it's a great system. You should at least have a skeleton crew or something that is paid to work on things that they don't give a shit about. But, I mean, that's how the system is. So it's, it really is a question of, like, does Valve's philosophy and does their company structure work in 2020, whereas it used to work in, like, 2001? And uh, that's a question that the company itself has to ask. But then again... Who gives a shit? I mean, Steam makes more than a small nation. Obviously, yep. it's working. So what are you going to do? I guess, though, one thing, though, that is good is that it is that community feedback. People say that Valve never listens. And as you say, they actually do when yeah. there's a stink. If things get fixed in Counter-Strike. I remember when the uh, the Revolver came out, the absolute shit show that happened from that. And that was turned over pretty quick. I mean, they probably should have tested it first. I mean... But... <laughs> Not quick enough, though. I mean, That's you know, it, 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 for about I, I want to say it was a, it was a few days. Yeah, which, you know, <laughs> I, like we, we basically we had an eight hundred dollar pistol in the game that was the best gun. Like you would drop an orb to pick this up. It was like yeah, like, I remember. Yeah, it was. I ridiculous. saw the triple headshot video. Oh god, yeah. I don't know if you Glorious. saw someone did like a highlight video. It was like with Wild Wild West playing in the yeah. background. <laughs> it was fucking insane. You know. But I don't know. I mean, obviously, I'm biased. Uh, you know, Valve's done a lot for me, and uh, I try not to be yeah. a big fanboy, but honestly, I am. I mean, I literally hate Riot. I'm sorry, but uh, fuck Riot and all that they're walking around the office uh, teabagging each other and shit uh, controversies that they've had. Uh, Blizzard does what Blizzard does, but I mean, at the end of the day, I still think that Valve is one of the best devs in the business just Agreed, because yeah. of community feedback. And it's you can never be perfect. And stuff like the Battle Pass that came out this year was unequivocally the best job that they've ever done. Stuff yeah. like the, uh, the custom event that they made was literally a free DLC for like a new kind of game. And um, Aghanim's people, Labyrinth's great as it well. It was amazing. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And um, I mean, I think they do a fantastic job, but I wouldn't change it any other way, though. The community deserves to bitch. Should they bitch as much? Should... Probably not. But honestly, you got to be a realist. As a person watching this podcast, as you, as me, we all know that most people are fucking insane. Most people walk around without a mask, coughing on people, saying that the 5G is in it. I mean, so yeah, it's good to have those opinions and, and take that with a grain of salt and know that that's most people. Most people are that. So, I mean, let them go. I mean, let them have their day. If my, day, if my game is improved because these psychopaths uh, want to complain all day on my behalf, shout out, my friends. <laughs> good luck. So I'm going to really put you in it now, right? Because the it, other it, sense of entitlement is a phenomenon I've noticed around TI involves mm -hmm. talent. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I've said this many times. Like, I have never complained. Back when I was in the active talent pool, which I'm hoping to return to in 2021. Oh. Um, get back into hosting and stuff. Obviously, I'll never host a TI. You can't really wheel me out. And well, hey, everyone, here's the guy that had that incident with Loader. I mean, it would be great content. <laughs> think but, about the um, content. But yeah, I don't think that can happen. But um, you know, I can <laughs> I, I can host all the others. I've done TV. It's fine. I'm 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 very good. Um, sure. But anyway, uh, the 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 other, I've never complained about not being hired for something because it's like if you don't want to hire me, like just you just don't, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I uh, um I, I would never tweet out. Should have been me. I think I think what what you implicitly say when you say that it's not just like first of all I'm the best, but it's also yeah. that like I'm definitely better than that guy. 
Yeah, so, it's terrible. You, yes. terrible career move. <laughs> yeah, and yet when TI comes rolling around, because it's such a big event and it's so lucrative, and I know that the Dota talent, there's a lot of them, and it's you know very competitive in terms of day rates and things like that, and people are willing sure. to undercut, which is a little bit sneaky, but you got to do what you got to do. I mean, I, I wouldn't agree with you there, but continue. You well, no, you know, you know what I mean when I say it's a little bit sneaky. It, it just sort of is, like especially if you're like in the green room talking about how much do you charge, and they go, "I charge thousand dollars a day," and you go, "I'm gonna eight fifty you, motherfucker." Uh, you know what? All right, real talk well, though. Yeah, yeah, okay. I've well, never that, yeah, I've seen this from one Dota talent. This. All right, go on. one Dota talent I've ever seen actually try to actively undercut people, mm. and that Dota talent is no longer with us anyway. So, yeah. from what I've seen, I mean. You're t- I can see where you're coming from from an outsider's point of view, but from an insider's point of view, I mean, it's just Dota talent don't even know if they're working the international till two yeah. weeks beforehand. Like, there's no competition doesn't even exist. It's survival. My first time that I ever worked at TI, I got hired to be the post-game interview guy. I walk in with a notebook of 90 page of notes, and a guy comes up to me and he says, hey, you know what? We think you'd be great as a stage host. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I've never staged host. He says, well, we're live in 10 minutes. Go do the opening for TI6. And that was it. There, there's no like undercut. There's no planning. Yeah. It's, oh, Jesus. That, that is literally <laughs> all it is. Oh, I bet, you, I bet your ass was twitching, mate. Oh, are you fucking kidding? Sta- stage at my hosting face, is something else. Like, I can't even yeah. do that. Fuck. Look at my face before Casey talks on my first time on camera before TI6. I'm literally about to shit bricks. And then it's just like, <sighs> cameras are on, go. But... Mm. I can legitimately say that the Dota talent itself is some of the, well, I don't have a lot of experience. I don't work a lot of non-Dota events and I don't know a lot of non-Twitch guys, but there is really hardly any talk about undercutting people. We're going to fuck over this guy. Tournament organizers. Yes. Different story. I have heard tournament organizers say like, yo, that goes on in every, yeah. Let's hire a tier two guy instead of a tier one guy. But honestly, I mean, Dota talent is just stupid. They don't have like a, uh, (laughs) they don't have a, uh, what do you call it? One of those talent guilds or whatever that they come together. Like, um, yeah. uh, what does Counter Strike have? The on fire guys. Oh, I mean that's that. Yeah. that was never a real thing. Like, oh, the, the guys oh. will forgive me for saying it. I mean, I think it was meant to function how it how uh, ostensibly how it was presented, but it never. Really oh, okay. Was. But yeah, so I mean, it's really not that competitive, and people don't know if they're going to get hired for TI. They don't know why they don't get hired for TI. They get no warnings uh there's people that have been hired at ti that i mean chobra didn't work in dota for like four years and then he gets an email and he says hey we want you to host uh, one series the grand finals explain that to me <laughs> but i yeah it's it's fucking yeah. madness and that's how it works in uh, dota 2 valve land uh you don't know anything it just you get an email and surprise Uh, you don't get to pick or argue for your stance so there have been a few instances though which is where i was going oh let's go yeah about you know talent and i won't name them here um because there's been more than one but you know they they don't get picked up for a ti Uh and they go on twitter and they you know (laughs) well guys i am very sad (laughs) right you know what I'm them, though. About? I mean, no, but it's a- like, listen, you've got to take yeah. a fucking breath and just step back because how does that help anyone? I've said this it multiple doesn't. times as well, like, because I've been a talent recruiter myself, you know, mm-hmm. and, and um, uh, like sometimes it's a test. If people don't know really about your personality, they pass you over for one event to see how you'll react with it and publicly. Mm. And because, you know, I know TOs that do this. And, uh, you know, the best thing you can do is if you don't get hired for whatever reason, you've sent your reel in, you've been in constant communication, it just doesn't work out or they just don't think you're going to be a good fit for that one event. Never go on fucking your socials no. and, and cuss out the person that had no obligation to hire you in the first place. Because no, then they work, go, though. yeah, well, I mean, some it can sometimes well. I mean, this is the other thing I will say. The flip side of this coin is, you know, for example, like D-Man over in League of Legends, you know, like... Mm-hmm he basically leveraged the community to get his job, you know, full time. He like basically yeah. said, if I don't have a full time job, I'll have to bloody stop. There was zero chance of that happening. But the but the reality is he knew he was so popular he could use the community to generate enough um feeling towards Riot that they were, you know, essentially cajoled into picking him up. So yeah, but but I but I think in general, like ninety five percent of the time it doesn't work. It's not a good idea. So what I do mean, you think you gotta, about talent that do that when in, when you see that happening? 
not a good it's not a good play uh i i don't know how adult your podcast is here but you gotta have some real big dick energy to be like uh <laughs> saying yo i got nothing to lose i'm really upset because uh you know it, you gotta be like a tyler one or a shocks you know i'm going freelance don't care what happens <laughs> and uh it's never a good move to do that but at the same time it's a product of the uh, scene that they created. Uh, Dota 2 scene is very much based in capitalism. There is very little overhead. The best product wins. And uh, if you're the best product, the gods that be will choose if you succeed. It goes for tournament organizers. It goes for teams. And it goes for talent as well. You have to prove that you are so big and so ready to roll that is a shadow of a doubt. A uh, great example is my friend Sunspan, who I love so much. Community loves him. Yeah, he's a great um, guy, yeah. Yeah, uh, every time he's on a panel, people explode. Nobody on tournament organizers hire him. Why? Because of that simple fact that I tell talent all the time in Dota. Nobody gives a shit if you do your job well. Nobody fucking cares. It's when you are not there doing your job. If people care, then you will get hired. It's people complaining that you're not there. You need to have such a personality that people say, why isn't this guy there? And manufacturing that means making ulterior content, like a podcast or a YouTube or a Twitch, building that community. Anybody can do your job. Doing a job is easy, but, um, you know, anybody can cast. But it's making a community and making yourself a talent is making it so that you're someone that the community has to see at an event. And I think that's a lot of people's problem and where they throw it away with, like, comments like that. Like, mm. oh, why didn't I get hired? You didn't get hired because people weren't mad that you didn't get to go. And that's, you got to do that. That's like part of the gig. So yep. never a good idea unless you're the biggest dick dude in the world. I mean, if I didn't get hired for TI, honestly, I probably would not write anything. What's the point? Just go do something else. Like cover TI, pull a Tyler one and run your own event. You know, you got to stay motivated. That's how you yep. stay alive. Agreed. But anyway. Uh, you know, I, I've said this. I think I tweeted this. So it might be a matter of public record. <laughs> but, but I think one of the things I love the, I love a lot of the Dota talent pool. I think one of the people, one of the things people don't realize is I'm friends with a lot of you guys and mm -hmm. I've had the pleasure of working two Dota events and mm -hmm. um, you know, I love guys like Cap and you know, Moxie. I, I've done every Dota event I've done. I think both of those uh, guys have been there and you know, a ton of other yeah. Zayori, all of those guys. Um, but anyway, the, the, and a bunch of names I've left out now who hate me, uh, <laughs> but, but the, the, uh, the reality is I, I still sort of think there is a lot of these issues with Dota talent. It's rooted mm. in a great insecurity. That's almost in the same way that teams are worried about, like TI is the be all and end all. We train for yeah. TI essentially. We'll miss tournaments that are close to TI because we don't want to reveal scrats and drafts or burn, get burnout. It's all about mm. TI. I feel a lot of talent think that way as well. And, sure. and, and I think this has led to like, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of people I know play it safe and don't speak up on issues and don't give their honest opinion. And I, I don't think I've seen a more kind of, for want of a better word, insecure talent pool when it comes to mm. just being comfortable with being yourself, expressing your opinions. You know, I think we're moving away from that now. Like, you know, you see Kyle and guys like that just fucking, yeah. you know, they don't give a flying fuck. We see Kyle. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and, and it's great. I think, I, think it, I think the reason he's a breath of fresh air is because he's not falling into that same trap. But, but again, sure. th this might be a, a perception that's not accurate. W what do you think? About I mean, uh, I wouldn't say that you're really that disaccurate. I mean, that's yeah. another thing of this capitalist system. You know, in other esports, these guys are paid. They're hired by the company. So, you know, they, they have job security, but then they also don't get to really talk about stuff. Then you have guys like the Counter-Strike dudes who literally built their own community and they couldn't give less of a shit and talk as much shit as you want. And then we're right in the middle where it's like we have enough freedom, but if we piss people off, will that mean that our literal careers are over? Are we going to get James? And, uh, that and, and, is and that's of, the elephant in the room, right? I think it goes right. worse after the two good thing. Because if it could happen to him, it could happen to anyone, right? Yeah. And I, I, you know, I've gone on the record before. I, I don't think they made the wrong decision with James. That was fucked up. <laughs> but so, I mean, honestly, so though. Behaviorally on the broadcast, sure, I might, um, yes. I might be inclined to agree. Like, I'm an, I'm an edgy guy, but, you know, I managed to come through unscathed two years of American <laughs> network television. Right. Right? Like, you, you read the room and you work within the parameters that you have to. Like, when I'm on sure. my own Twitch channel, I can say what the fuck I want. 
and the only risk is to myself and my Twitch channel. I think, mm -hmm. make, I think when you're doing a Chinese broadcast and you're talking about, what was it, Madam Ling's flying midget circus porn or whatever. Yeah, you're, like, you're talking about you can't do that. <laughs> it's like, I'm watching this going, James, man, like, what the fuck? It's not even about getting fired at that point. You might not even get out the fucking country. You might end up <laughs> Like your exactly, bastard, you know. So I, I I agree behaviorally speaking, but then when James released his dossier uh, and was talking about how Valve had always had kind of a secret resentment to him because he'd tried to get the talent to unionize essentially, and he'd pushed for them to get more pay, then it you sort of start wondering if you know, okay, that there is a little bit of a more sinister aspect to it. Uh, yeah, but if you remember, the end of the dossier was also a two-page advertisement for his video game. So, I mean, at the same time, <laughs> which is out everything now. is... Yeah, which is out, and it's a great game. Congratulations. But uh, at the same time, there's, like, this balance. and It's kind of... I mean, would you say that's that different than working a normal job? Honestly, if you're going to go walk around and talk about how your employers sure. are fucking stupid, you're probably going to get talked to by them as well. And um, you can be a big personality and be so powerful that like, yeah, you're a constant issue that's bringing stuff up. And that's really great for the talent. But the sad fact of the matter is, is that in the ecosystem that you're in, when anyone gets to decide if you're too risky to be hired and et cetera, that's the risk that you run with that community goodwill. Um, I also, unfortunately, really think that Dota's community is especially toxic we do have a very vitriol filled community that outwardly is extremely toxic and it's almost in a way why fuel that fire when it's already raging as talent right i mean mm -hmm. it, that's my philosophy at least uh there's just so much shit from the Dota community already why yeah. be like you know what here's something else to be pissed off about but I power to people. I have big respect for Kyle. I mean, he, he risks getting tired for TI every time he opens his stupid mouth. So uh, shout out to him, but uh, that's the world. And I think that though you think that Dota talent might be super reserved. I think we do have a lot more freedom than like overwatch league talent and stuff like that. They got rid of their entire oh, talent I mean pool. You know, uh, fuck off. Like, close. dude, I'm just, I'm just waiting for the <laughs> announcement that it's uh, over. And like, because I got friends over there too, and I'm just like, listen, dudes, like, just, just ride that fucking wave. Like, make, yeah. your, make, make your paper, but just also, you know, if a new game comes out, maybe play it a bit on the side. Just have a, just have a plan B, because I sure. mean, their average viewership's down to like what, forty one thousand now. Since YouTube moved, gaming, you know, Woo! yeah, right, <laughs> and that's with all of you know that that was like considered like a flagship esports deal. That's with YouTube really wanting to push them. It's like guys, like you know, the, put it this way: what we what we now all know, which many of us suspected, Call of Duty's, mm -hmm. and it was always the way better option. That was the one yeah. that realistically had the most. Uh, you know, chance of success. Um, and it's worked. And it's worked because even Blizzard themselves did things slightly differently when they started that league, you know, like mm -hmm. keeping the legendary brands over there so you keep the fan base, you know, no yep. brainers like this, which of course, <laughs> you know, when you're the likes of Pete Blastelica and your fucking background is, well, right, it worked on Fox Sports. Like, no, this is different. No, huh? no. This is fucking different. I know more about this industry than you, Pete. I know you don't think that, but it's true. Mm -hmm. And like any endemic esports worker does. It's ridiculous. So yeah, fuck, it is. Yeah, fuck the Overwatch League. Dude. I mean, that's, yeah, but I'm just saying, that's, like you know, yeah, they it, can't yeah, say yeah, anything. They you know? can't say and anything. It, absolutely. Yeah, it really is that open market in economy for Dota to be like, do you want to risk it to talk shit about uh, the bosses? Well, uh, feel and I think free. personality types as well. Like I've always made the joke that like when you see like the fucking CS guys doing a mm -hmm. bit of downtime it's always like we're at bar you know we're all the ice like pistols in the snow like doing like shots you know yep. flaming sambucas maybe we're in a strip club and then it's like you see the dota people like saying well we're just playing risk tonight and it's like they're all yeah, i mean it's true i, I I'm happy to admit every other esports are chance we're as nerd as we get our typical after party is we all go back to our hotel rooms and quee and dota i mean mm. dota's a fucking nerd game i mean, it's sad yeah, to exactly. say yeah. and look at our pro players you got counter-strike players walking up there with their muscles and shit taking their shirts off then we have our guys like gremlining over to their computers but that's the nature of the game dota 2 is a game where you know you have to spend a hundred hey, bsj hours looked to get really going. good in that toga the other Yo, day real talk though yeah. we have well he's also not a pro player you know he's, yeah, he true, actually sucks true. so yeah. the better you are the less good looking you are he's, he's slipping into the eternal envy territory <laughs> at the moment of being the <laughs> <laughs> the best player that makes the worst decisions in any given moment. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so. <laughs> but, so, yeah. Um, 
I think that that is a part of it too, is like, you know, we're just a very reserved kind of community. I've always said that Dota 2 panels are the worst panels in esports um, because there's nobody that has any fucking conflicting opinions. Mm. It's always like, this guy did such a good job. Oh, I concur. But they're, they're scared to call out players, right? I've seen this before as well. Yeah. I, mean, I think it might even have been before Cinder and transitioned into doing desk work I, I seem to recall him in the past having said like how dare i think it was might have been might have been his the guy who went on to be his stable well we obviously don't talk about it now but toby won i think he might yeah. have called him out for criticizing a, a play and saying you know this guy's a fucking you know 2k scrub like how, how is I, he you know how is he criticizing my game and i think you, that you know you have to understand how the game works like obviously a pundit on a desk isn't as good as you as a pro player but the, there has to be someone that says you made a mistake if you lost the game there yeah. has to be well not in dota you see dota 2 is the only thing that we care about is how good we are we're the mm. elitists we're better than league so the pro players are put on such a pedestal of untouchability of the greatest of all time. I mean, you literally have to win a TI to talk shit about another TI player. And that's why, like, as an analyst or what our people that work in the talent scene, we literally can't judge anyone. Only an ex-pro player can talk shit about a pro player. And that's why mm -hmm. Kyle Swindles is able to do what he does because at least he was on complexity. He didn't even win, but he can at least talk. But anytime that he talks anything, the entire chat is just like, you never fucking achieved anything in your life. And we do have that big dichotomy, whereas in other esports, you know, the caster is a caster. They don't have yeah. to have played the game. They can say whatever they want because that's their job. Don't, not so much in Dota. But that's our elitist attitude. And at the same time, that's what makes us good. It, like, that's what makes the community its identity. Is We believe we're the best and we only care about the best. So it's weird, but that's where it is. So you touched upon it earlier, and we've talked mm -hmm. a little bit about the guy that wrote a very long... Uh, diatribe about it recently let's get into <laughs> your thoughts about this um streamer taking games from dota tv oh, broadcasting boy. them doing their own commentary while a tournament is running as well there are a lot of conflicting yeah. opinions i'll lay the table of my own and 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 that way maybe yours won't be the worst opinion on this podcast <laughs> so th this is my opinion this is what i publicly stated and i under mm -hmm. and trust me i'm kind of conflicted but I think if for big events, if you run the game through the client and an asshole with a webcam can broadcast the, the same game and just be talking over the top of it and get more viewership than your all singing, all dancing, all the best talent, replays, all of this interviews with the players because you're live at the event, all of that ancillary content you record in the building. If more people tune into that guy's stream, your product is fucked, right? Mm. And, and, and as a result, it seems to me that you might want to look a little bit closer to home before you lash out at the streamers. Also, I don't know necessarily that if he gets 30,000 viewers and you have 80,000 viewers, I don't know if you DMCA that guy, you get 110,000 viewers. You might only get 85,000. There might sure. not be a massive crossover as you think there is. All right. Those, those, those are my thoughts on it. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm sympathetic to TOs and sympathetic to streamers that are now being told something that always existed is suddenly a problem. Let me ask you a question. Would you, you have a, your favorite TV show. It's out on cable television, and it's out on Netflix. Which mm. one do you watch? Good question. Uh, probably Netflix. Uh, Netflix. Why? There's no commercials. There's no... Mm. You get the entire product. There's no way... Netflix bought the show. That's right. the whole point. Of course you're going to go for the product with less of commercials, less downtime, only the action. The thing is, though, the streamer didn't buy the product. The streamer just showed up and took it. I mean, people always use real sports examples, right? Like, uh, you know, there's no real sports where people can do all this shit. Well, that's why they build a fucking wall around a soccer arena. Mm. I love streamers. I think that streamers are keep the game alive. It keeps us up because in times like with what Valve's doing with the DPC, there's literally no pro scene. So the streamers are the only thing that's keeping it alive. But it's so easy to do a system like what Valve announced. And it's... <sighs> Well, how do I say this? Uh, you know, the streamers are not the people that you need to get angry with. You need to get angry with Valve for their insane fucking anyone can stream a product uh, at any time. And I agree with you that, yes, 
obviously they are making a product that is competitive. But the thing is, is that they had no investment in that product. And watching them and only supporting them stealing other people's product is not helping the scene in any way. Like the thing that people always quote on this is if you shut down the guy with 10,000 viewers, those 10,000 viewers aren't going to go and watch uh, the mainstream. Mm. No shit. Who fucking cares? If I go into a movie theater and I record a movie and I give it to you and you watch the stolen DVD and, and then you go to the movie company and say, you know what? I would have never watched your movie if this guy didn't steal it. Fucking good. good. I'm glad you didn't get to see, see it if this guy didn't steal it. That's the fucking point. Please pay for it. That is the point. Yeah. So, I mean, and again, it's as a guy who's run my own tournaments, Midas Mode 1, 2, Captain's Draft, I've done sales on tournaments before. Do you want to know why Dota 2 only has betting sponsors? It's not because it's a fucking coincidence. It's because when you go to a major company like Monster or Pepsi or Red Bull and you say, hey, I'm putting on this tournament. And they say, cool, how many viewers are you going to have? And then you say, I, I don't know. Some, I, technically, anybody could steal it. And then they say, okay, well, well, this streamer has a competing company to mine. He's sponsored by Monster and I'm Red Bull. And then you say, well... Can't do anything about it. Sorry. Please give me money, though. <laughs> like, it's fucking nonsense. It's insane. And I think that... But doesn't, system, that, doesn't that suggest that maybe the business model is fucked? Like, and, mean, and, only, and only specifically yeah. around Dota, understand. Because sure. you, can, you can do it with other games like this. But it's like, you know, not every eSport has to be the same. And, and, and there are unique challenges and unique parameters. I mean, I've, I, I said, you know, in line with my opinion... Like why run it? Why run a Dota tournament at all if the ROI is so fucking bad? Great question. That's why no one is. And but they are. The they are still. Dying. They are though. There's the only one. We play. That's it. Well, ESL last time is saw e a PGO. ESL is still doing them. ESL only gets to do it because they do not all the other games. They have long-term sponsors from Mercedes, not for Dota, but for mm. all of ESL's products. Dota's a fucking loss. I have no idea how they could be making money off Dota. Oh well, they ain't. Dota. I don't. I don't think yeah. they are. But they're still doing them. Well, they have to. I mean, it, it is more of a, yo, we might as well do this because there's a big fan base, and then, you know, they continue. I mean, people are always saying, well, if it doesn't work, uh, why are people still doing tournaments? They're fucking not. That is the whole point, is that it's slowly going down. It's time to see if we can find a way to swing it back up. Right. And it's, uh, you know, I don't blame people for watching those streams. I don't blame the streamers for watching those streams. They're living within the parameters set. But at the same time, don't fucking delude yourself and think that stealing the movie is somehow helping make more movies. It's not. I, you're, you are doing a disservice for a better product. If that's your prerogative and you don't give a shit, that's fine. But um, I think that the Valve system where they said that tournament organizers should be able to put in parameters, it's a perfect thing. Um, I said for a long time, and I suggested to them myself, why don't tournament organizers just have an overlay in-game, and then boom, you want to watch the game, you automatically see the sponsors. And that's a genius system. If Gork wants to stream my stream thought, for 10,000 viewers. I, I thought Dota, uh, yeah. I thought Valve had, had stopped you doing that, though. I thought that was one of the things that was, was a problem. Like, they, they said, you mm -hmm. cannot put, you know, we, we won't put the, on the, the logos in the in-game client. We won't do that. Yeah. But they feel free to do that for DPC events. That sounds great. But, yeah. you know, I mean, other sports, you have to buy the broadcaster rights, too. That's another big argument. Mm -hmm. Dota 2 is free to, for anybody. You want to make an event? Don't pay Valve anything. Congratulations. Which is really good. And it helped us for the first 10 years. It blew up our esports scene. But now, on the decline, you're just going to fucking nosedive if you don't allow people to uh, make money off the product. The hype is over, my friends. Mm. It is now time for, in our twilight years, to sustain rather than grow. The growth is done. So, uh, yeah, that's so what, my personal. What's the solution, opinion. then? The solution is allow people to make money on things. And uh, the original thing, anyway, said that uh, tournament organizers, like, professional entities could not steal each other's content. Mm -hmm. Me, my company, Moonduck, could not stream BTS's tournament, Beyond the Summit's tournament, yeah. uh, because that's two separate money-making entities. A streamer is a money-making entity. A bulldog streaming a game with 30,000 viewers does make a shitload of money by running ads and having subscribers. So it, the, Maybe I, the loophole there, if you're an ESL or somebody, is does Bulldog ha have himself registered as a company? I mean, sure. <laughs> I right? Mean, yeah. You know. But 
I mean, if you have advertisements on your stream, you're a company. If you have sponsors, you're a company. And I agree that Dota system is very much the best must rise to the top. A guy with a hundred viewers should be able to watch an in-game Dota client stream. But if you're that big, should you have free reign over content that you had nothing to do creating? Not in my opinion, but I think the new system does solve that. It says, if you want to stream our games, feel free. And, um, you know, here are our stipulations. And a lot of tournament organizers, they're going to fuck up. I could totally see ESL having a 30-page thing saying that they have to do all these things to make sure that no one can restream them. That's the dumbest thing you can do. Make it very easy. Have an overlay. And then go to your sponsors and say, yeah, the mainstream got 70. But these streamers all together also got 70. And they all saw your ads. That's the Valve way to do it. Let the people work for you. So I think it's solved, personally. We'll see how it goes, though. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't sound like you're in it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it, it's, yeah, okay. it, it, it's, 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 like I say, it's one of those issues where it's like, you know how some problems just don't have sort of elegant solutions? Sure. Uh, and what, you're sort of scrambling to find the answer that does, like, the least harm? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I think, this is, I think this is one of those. Um, Probably, yeah. You know, I, I, like, we got completely fucked over on the same issue in CSGO, by the way. Because even though, so? well, so even though the major is in the uh, 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 game client, a pa- mm. Valve pretend that their partner for the major owns the copyright to their game, which they mm. don't, allowing mm. them to DMCA anyone streaming the the in-game client and oh my even God. The, and even the demo files. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, I'm on the, it's, it's very hard. Cause if you give too much power to the P, the TOs, you mm. literally kill the game as well. Then, you know, we're, we're having our fucking trophies made by Gucci and shit. And it's like, oh, welcome to the Pepsi post game. It's awful. So it has to be this balance. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful that the community is so swinging strong in one way that we're going to end up in a nice medium center. Mm. So uh, another thing, this is like another heavy topic. So I'll, I'll mm-hmm. totally understand if you want to kind of, you know, uh, circumnavigate this or even edit it out. It's, it's fine. Um, oh, you know me. <laughs> I know. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll I'm see. in. <laughs> uh, so obviously uh, there was a lot of issues that were brought up in the Dota community as well in regards to, uh, you know, part of this gaming Me Too movement we had, which mm, is, yep. um, you know, I, I, I wrote about this extensively. I've called people out before. One of the sad realities that haven't been around for two decades is that, you know, I, I, I know that there was a lot of fucked up shit going on behind the scenes and you would hear whispers and you'd hear rumors or people would even come and directly tell you this thing had happened, but please don't tell mm-hmm. anyone else. I'm just trying to get it off my chest, you know, and you can't tell somebody else's story for them. That's unethical. Yep. So, you know, there, there, was, there was a lot going on across multiple scenes. And when I saw this kind of wave happening, you know, I, I didn't know... Um, what would happen when it when it got to dota and there were a lot of people affected by it a lot of big names and you know it just it just went off like a bushfire and um, it did i remember you put your video out you know very emotional Uh, i'm getting emotional just thinking about it now again (laughs) well because you know it it sucks i mean it's like a lot of these people are obviously your friends and even if they were complete strangers we're all empathetic enough to you know understand this is a horrible thing and, uh, you know, the point you made in your, in your video was that this is about, you know, when, when, when we come together in these communities, it's about escaping from some of the other, you know, foul and depraved shit that goes on outside of our direct control, right? Like we come here yep. to enjoy ourselves, to escape, to grow as people in digital spaces. And yeah, I think, um, I think, it, I think it really sucked when I saw some of the names that were kind of embroiled in it yeah. and um you know I, I i i guess i'm kind of asking you know what's been the follow-up because it's been a while now it's been a month or two uh, uh, yeah thank god <laughs> yeah, so what's 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 been going on how, how how have things changed i mean it, it it was it was very tough and especially from a talent guy because as you said these are people that you work with and uh you know one of who i would have considered to be my best friend and talent Um, a man who every single time that I went to an event, he's the only person I talked to and we would have a ball and it'd be great. Um, you know, it turns out 
that that those things were happening behind the scenes and that that hits you not only as like on a professional level but at your core i mean this is like your friend who did this to people and that shakes up who you are you know and it was like it was awful i mean i was having dms from people that are like you had to have fucking known tell you had to have known that this guy was doing this i mean how do you think i know that shit we're about to cast i'm like what are you up to man thanks for coming oh i'm good i just fucking molested somebody like i don't fucking know that's awful so the whole thing um was really jarring and um as you said, you hear rumors about stuff, but there's never yeah. really evidence about anything. There's no one actually coming out and telling their stories. And it was, uh, it was insane. It was one of the craziest things that's ever happened because these weren't just random people. These weren't just people that were some tier two talent. This is like, try to find a game from TI1 through TI4 that Toby Wan wasn't casting. These are legitimate pillars of the community that are just gone. And that is so insane to think about, but it's also so good for the community too, because you have to get rid of the rot. You have to get rid of the baddies in the scene to be able to have something good. And um, it's just, yeah, it's, I'm. I, I, think, I, think Pudge, I think Pudge said it best as well. Um, you, you know, he, in, when one of his streams that happened immediately afterwards, he said, listen, these people might be able to redeem themselves and go on to learn how to not be pieces of shit but they don't have to do it in the Dota community anymore. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I think, look, the reality is a lot of these people, you know, we're, we're talking about, like you say, pillars of the community, people who would mm -hmm. have authority and mm -hmm. influence over younger people, vulnerable people, naive yeah. people. Um, you know, and, and not only that, there's an air of trust, isn't there? There you is. Know? Not I'm, just for them and the fans, but also them and their colleagues. Yeah. Like, I mean... Ah, man, it was fucking terrible. But at the same time, I, I can't feel bad about it because it's not hard. It's not hard mm. to not, you know, mm. uh, do terrible things. Um, most of us don't. So the fallout, though, to answer your question, it, it was, uh, well, well, why do you, it was pretty strange. Um, uh, this first event we play that just happened in Dota was the first major event, uh, mostly because of Corona. And thank God, in this case, for that happening. We would have been in TI three weeks before TI, the Me Too movement would have hit, and then it would have just probably killed the game yeah. if we had an actual half of the TI staff is fired. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it took, got a lot of time to process, and it was certainly weird not really being able to touch it um, in, like, a tournament organization thing, and it's not something that really we joke too much about or even talk about on live broadcast still because we're still recovering. But, honestly, I feel like the community – pretty much feels the same way as the talent um there's a couple of guys out there that are like you know free this guy he was innocent you know I've the goddamn that. normies and i there's always gonna be fucking psycho i mean look we, we're all uh, you know i think most rational people you know take offense to the idea of people who haven't done uh things or have done one wrong thing like a bad tweet 10 years ago losing yeah. everything they have now i think most people yeah they find they find that abhorrent and you've got to be some very kind of malevolent person to take glee in tearing people down for very minor sins that happened yep. so long ago that these are different people what we're talking about here is not cancel culture we're talking mm -hmm. about people that very often have multiple blots in the copy book and have yep. done heinous shit for years, got away with it for years, felt enabled by the fact they got away with it for years, so that emboldened them to do worse things. And now, finally, people speak out, and it's the domino effect. Like, fuck those people forever. Like, who gives yeah, I a know. fuck? Who gives a fuck? Yeah. I don't want. I, them, I don't want them coming back in a year either and telling their fucking stories about. You know, <laughs> I went. I, I went to fucking therapy. I don't give a fuck. Sure. Like, you know, I, I, don't I don't care. Like, never come back. Stay all the way fucked off. Go get a job in a call center. Hope no one Googles your name. Just stay gone. Like, just please. I mean, it, it's tough. And I do agree with you. Like, forgiveness is a cornerstone of not only, like, you know, life, but also Dota 2. Some of the, the biggest cheaters, like uh, Solo, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. 322. Yep. I mean, he fucked up. But he fucked up once. And he came back. And now he is a pillar of the community. And it's okay to fuck up, but it's not okay to have this habitual, horrible shit um, that went on. And 
fuck them. I mean, that's yeah. the only way that you can really survive with that kind of stuff. And there's still a lot of holdouts too. There's a lot, every single time that sure. Cap casts, there's people that are like, Cap, you fucking snake, that Toby was innocent. And it's like, oh, what do you want? Him. At what the end of the want? day, I like to think that a lot of these people are very young. And when they get older and maybe have families of their own and have daughters of their own, yeah. and, you know, and their daughters are going to parties, right? And things yeah. like this, you know, they'll think back to the ideas that they held when they were like 18, 21, you know, whatever. And I think you're going to feel very differently. Um, you know, if you ever hear someone's laid a hand on your daughter in an inappropriate setting when she's drunk or vulnerable, I think you'll probably be going around and knocking on that guy's door probably. You know? absolutely just say be lucky if you don't shoot him for god's sakes if you're in america well, yeah, then you'll well. be lucky if the cops don't shoot you after you shoot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. sorry i'm not allowed to say stuff like that anymore no but... no it, it, it's fine you said it they don't reflect the views of richard lewis on this podcast <laughs> please don't come and get me youtube like whatever oh no <laughs> but... Uh, but look, there was there was one name yeah. there was one name sure. and i, I want to talk about it specifically because i know that obviously you have a good working relationship and it, it didn't sit right with me and i spoke out at the time and I, I, I think we've got to be very careful because there was, mm. there was a lot happened all at once. And I saw, for example, people coming out and saying, oh, this person bullied me. And it's like, okay, bullying bad. Yeah. But, but the, the Me Too movement needs it – just, just give it some time like, to breathe. Mm -hmm. like, we can talk about your thing next week. Like, let, let, this, let this go because you're sucking the air out the room, right? Like, you know, it's disrespectful – to genuine victims of you know been molested, sexually assaulted, raped, you, you, you need to let these people have the time in the room to tell their stories. And if you come in and go, oh yeah, and I I, I got bullied, you're like it, it's not that your mm -hmm. negative experience isn't worth talking about, but it's like yes, it just ain't the time. Like it we'll doesn't read the room. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly <laughs> right. right. So and, and so I saw a lot of that, but I also saw um you know the the incident with with Zayori, right? Who's a good friend of mine. And mm -hmm. a guy I really, really like. Uh, so take it with a pinch of salt about the bias. But when, when I saw the allegations and I saw the word rape used, right. I, was, I was like, oh my God, not Zayori. Because like I, you know, I know the guy and I'm sure you had the same moments yeah. with these other dudes. But then it was like, when we saw the story as it was laid out, which the person mm -hmm. that made the accusation also agreed with the version of events, it's like, no, that, that, that word is completely inappropriate for what happened yeah. here. What this guy did was he was a bit naive about like power differentials mm -hmm. and he did a really cringeworthy thing of saying, hey, I'm surrounded <laughs> by ultra testosterone yeah. dudes. Can I lie that we had sex? And she felt pressured to say yes, but mm -hmm. actually no, no one even laid a hand on anyone else. And I was like, hmm, surely someone will come out and speak up for Zayori. And I, I, I think everyone was terrified because of the nature of what was going on at the, this maelstrom of our allegations and many of sure. them serious crimes, I think people felt a little bit afraid to be the person in the room who went, nah, Zayori doesn't belong to that. That is yeah. a separate thing. And I, I felt really sorry for him. It looked to me from where, I, again, from where I was, that he kind of got hung out to dry. And, and, I, and I hope that, you know, people do realize and do see the difference and don't lump him in because that would be a wretched legacy for, for a guy who those are really moderate mistakes by contrast to the other things we're talking about, yeah. which aren't mistakes at all. They are evil, despicable crimes. I mean, I, I agree with you. And this is a thing that is so dangerous about this kind of stuff too, because when I read that thing, mm. that, expose this you gotta this is my colleague this is a guy that i work with in my company i know him for years i'm like holy shit this guy's a rapist <laughs> like that mm. was my first initiation uh, thought mm. and then without him being able to tell his side that is where the narrative sits this is it and this yep. is my expose and fuck this guy and his life is over and unless that narrative on the other side has an accurate explanation it's just over and that's what's so scary about this kind of movement stuff also, what's so scary is like guys like Toby Wan, the first thing that happened, the first accusation, there were many people, professionals that I knew sending me messages like, hey, we're all going to come out and say something for Toby because this is all bullshit. He told us it was bullshit. We got this whole list of things. I, he never did anything. But then accusation two, three, mm -hmm. four, five. And you never know exactly what this person's been doing. So it is very scary to come up and be like, yo, 
uh, this guy is cool. And then day, the next day, five more accusations come out. So it is a terrifying position to be in. But I, what I hope, well, I guess most people wouldn't realize is that a lot of this support doesn't have to be public. I mean, personally, me, I talked to Zayori like four or five hours a day every day after the first thing got out talking about like, you know, what happened, how to uh, communicate his feelings appropriately and like how to, you know, get this stuff going. And the worst part about this whole thing was that was the inciting incident. It was this thing about Zayori and then we got through all this garbage, but that was the inciting incident. And uh, I think the community very much agreed with pretty much everyone's standpoint that it was like this weird miscommunication between two, one person trying to seek power and then another person overestimating how much power that they had. Yeah. Um, so I think he'll be okay. And I hope people will actually realize that, I mean, if you were friends with somebody in real life, you wouldn't go like tweeting and be like, guys, talking to my buddy about this fucking divorce case. Hope we got it. There's a lot of back end stuff that happens, but of course, yeah. public support is important. And at that time though, man, the world was on fire. We didn't know my fucking best friend in talent was getting like yeah. four things. I, of course, day one, I'm like, this is bullshit, but fuck. Well, I, think I don't that, know his that's, life. That's part of the problem as well, right? Like, I mean, you know, we can't help it. We're we humans, right? So, you know, we still got some mad primitive tribal shit going on in the back of our brain where it's like, if you're my friend, like you can't, I like this person, and and even yeah. though I I only know, you know, like ninety percent of their life at best, mm -hmm. I, I feel very comfortable coming out and defending this this person. I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, I think I think some people probably skirted and got away with it because there there, there is a lot of fear about calling out people that aren't just you know popular with the community but popular within an industry where yeah. the, the the sheer volume the sheer reach that the defenders are gonna have it it's gonna put people off coming forward and telling the truth because I mean, they, they think yeah. they're gonna get castigated by potentially millions of people it, it's terrifying it is i mean uh, i won't touch this one with a 10-foot pole but the whole red eye james banks thing i mean what a well, perfect no, example I, 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 I want i want you to touch it with a 10-foot pole it's literally the next thing on the list oh because, god <laughs> because he he suffered in in in, in the same way of like the timing and like again I, i'm friends with both of these dudes known them yeah. for 15 years maybe something like that you know um yeah. it, it's like the timing was deliberately done for maximum impact because right yeah and there's no getting away from that and There's James not. and James knows that, yeah. and and there's something very wrong about Red Eye, who is a pioneer in this space, and me and you don't make as much money as we do being hosts and being talent. Mm -hmm. If it isn't for people like him, literally rolling the boulder up the hill while yeah. we were a glint in the milkman's eye, hundred uh, percent, right? Mm -hmm. But also, you probably need to also acknowledge that he did have a professional manner that probably is not a professional in some settings and isn't all that fitting and then yep. when the story come out about him hitting a guy assuming it's true yeah you can't really <laughs> sign off on that either can you you can't yeah. that is positive behavior so it's like i i i think it's terrible that he's had to slip off like a thief in the night given everything he's done for the industry yes space. yeah and i say that as someone who had many run-ins with him he nearly he had me on the brink a fucking suicide man i mean he was a tough boss yeah. he was a tough tough boss but also he pushed me to do bigger and better things you know so is he a, is he an irredeemable asshole or is he like the esports steve jobs you know go fucking figure i don't know i mean this is like the ugh, this is the moral quandaries that us poor gamers who have barely any social understandings of anything at all are so challenged by but mm -hmm. i mean it's so hard because in situations like that and this is very close to the Zayori situation as well. There are clear intentions from one party to just destroy the other one. That is it. It is just like, I'm going after you. This is the time to do it. And motherfucker, I've been waiting for this. And is that your hero? Are you rooting for that guy? But are you rooting for the guy that actually did do things that are wrong? I mean, it's like, it's hard to come on a stance with that. And luckily... I don't think you have to. You don't have to come on a stance. You can say, like, Jesus, this is fucked up and just let it go. But I, these are moral questions I can't answer. And I've had all these same experiences with Red Eye. Red Eye has always been 
very questionable in some ways, but very father figure and made shit happen for the greatest, for the good of all of us. And out of everyone who got affected by the situation, it's him that I have the biggest process in my mind of trying to calculate like, God, he made esports. Like this guy made esports. And then he's just gone now and it's, it's fucking nuts. I don't know how I feel about it. I wish I could be better, uh, uh, <laughs> better interviewee, but it's something that I personally no, can't the, 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 This was the most uh, deliberately des- designed to be deliberately difficult section of. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's I've just got some palate cleansers coming. I got some fun ones coming. Oh, thank you. But uh, honestly, I mean, it's also hard because I'm not. I, I know it's really weird to say this, but I don't get into these situations, so I don't know how to like justify weird fucking. Sh- crazy shit like this right i i go back to my room and i read lore blogs i i'm not a social dude so i don't know how to fucking deal with this garbage but i let other people do it um mm. it's just you know there's always two sides to every story and sometimes there's just two people that are just going at each other's throats trying to kill each other and what do you do in that situation you don't have to root and you don't have to stop you just let them have their fucking showdown at the okay corral man let it mm. happen so look the the other big topic that's been discussed among the community at the moment is the classic dota it's dying <laughs> right or must be obviously apparently because yes. the numbers aren't as big as they once were and oh look even in a global pandemic where we're all been reduced to you know gremlin like shut-ins no one's <laughs> playing dota apparently yeah i think the numbers are still great and still uh, uh, very healthy but you know sure. uh, a lot of people have, have talked about this persistent dumbing down of the game maybe being a problem. I don't think that's anything to do with it at all. I think a lot mm-hmm. of the changes have been really positive and encourage people to play, you know, everyone sure. getting a career, things like this. Um, but uh, do, do, you, do, you, do you believe in this assessment that we are watching the, the, the slow decline of a juggernaut, of a, of, of a giant, you know, it's getting old and it's going to go to that elephant's graveyard and lie down in the next few years? Or do you think that Valve simply won't allow that to happen because they love the game so much? And I wish Dota was dying. Do you know how much <laughs> shit I would be able to get done if I didn't have to fa- play fucking Dota? I'm too addicted. I, no! I also <laughs> love watching you take, like, fucking poo, poo a purge when you play with him. You know that dude at the end of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade that fucking mm. drinks that cup in the night? Yes. He chose poorly, and he just <laughs> like you're doing that to him every time you're playing fucking techies or telling him that tangos are for fucking assholes and whatever, <laughs> exactly, whatever yes. gibberish you're coming out with. Ah, uh, Dota's not dying, and it's unfortunate because we would all be free and productive members of society again. Uh, Dota is a game that is just part of your soul if you get into it. You'll always go and play Fall Guys or something for a few months. Uh, you'll play PUBG for four months, but when it comes back to it, baby, you're just going back to Dota. Uh, the, Do- the game's been around for 15 fucking years, and people still play this goddamn game. It's just, uh, once you're in, you're, with, you're in. And yeah, I mean, I think that it's a natural progression, not only of the game, but of human beings. You, the older you get, the less games you get to play. Dota has an extremely old audience. It's extremely hard to get into. Um, it's not like Fortnite where you can just jump in and know everything that you need to know in the first five minutes. It takes thousands of hours. So in my opinion, let's just put it this way. If Dota even was dying, who fucking cares? Honestly, I mean, the, you're still going to get games. You're still going to play. Is it on an upswing? I mean, it's not ever going to die. So, uh, that's just how video games are. And if you're, you think it's any other way, you're fooling yourself. Name me one game that has survived 20 years and is still as popular as it has been. I mean, maybe got StarCraft, but even if the esports for the scene dies, you're still playing it if you want to. Whoa, C- whoa, C- what do C- we got? CS. CS. There you go. CS, we sure. Did we did it. You guys did it. And your scene is growing exponentially, sure. But, uh, you know, one day there will be a twilight, a heyday, and uh, the CS community will be... And that's Not when you get VR anymore. Dota 3. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't think it matters is the thing. Like, yeah. even if we don't beat the prize pool, even if the viewer, if the player numbers go down, I mean, as long as Valve's still working on it, is if, I, is, if Ice Frog is alive, it doesn't fucking matter anyway. It's mm-hmm. still the game. Would it be better if we had more players? Absolutely. Would it be better if Valve decided to do any form of advertising or any kind of support for the game in any way? 
absolutely. But uh, it's up to us as the community to complain about that shit to make it a priority. Because right now, all they do is make money. So who cares? You know? And from, from, one die, from a dying game to uh, a dead game <laughs> artifact, I know you loved it. Oh, don't, Richard Lewis. Don't no, do listen. this. I got fucking wrecked on that. That was one of my, oh, that's Don't. like one in a hundred things I get wrong. I said Artifact was going to reinvent the car game. It was going to be huge. It would make Hearthstone, it'd blow Hearthstone out the water. You know, we, I, got, I, got, I got wrecked. But I didn't have early access like a lot of motherfuckers who probably could have said something and done something. To stop. Hey, hey. You know. <laughs> I'm going to say some stupid shit here, but it fucking was. And I don't give a shit what you idiots say, okay? Listen, Artifact 1 was the greatest card game that ever made, and they only fucked up with the economy. That game needed two patches, two patches. Patch number one, the game is free and all the cards are free. Patch number two, we fix the broken cards. That's it. It was, and I will stand by it as a man with like 13,000 hours in that game, Fuck up. The only problem with Artifact is that it did what it said it was going to do. It yep. made the Dota 2 of card games. It made the most challenging, in-depth, high-skill ceiling card game to ever come out. And guess what? Card gamers suck. Sorry. They just want slot machines. They want Dota Underlords. Oh, level 3 Slark. They want Hearthstone. They didn't make that, so it died. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> they made it. No, so let, let's talk about how they quickly then pivot to Underlords. Uh, and then we'll Ugh, get back to Artifact. <laughs> do, you not, do you not like Underlords? I've never been a fan of Auto Chess. I don't, um, yeah, I, I don't understand Auto Battlers. I, like, I, so when it was uh, auto, the Auto Chess mod, I think I had one night where I, like, I'd, I'd been out and I'd fucked myself up so badly. I had a two-day mm -hmm. hangover. So I was in bed, like on a laptop, like, oh, you know, fat, disgusting, hungover. <laughs> and I was like playing it and it was like, that was, that was it. And then it was like the novelty wore off about the same time the hangover did. And exactly. I, so I couldn't understand it. And like Anders, you know, my mate Anders, yeah, he, yeah. he religiously plays that game. He loves auto battlers. And I'm like, how deep and engaging can these really be? Because it feels like ass to me. Like I go in occasionally, see what they've changed. Yeah. Oh, you get it. Avatar in game now with a special power. Ooh. Well, that was like, I actually liked it. So the problem with Valve is too, they took auto chess, which was super popular. And it was just a slot machine. Mm. Pull the lever and hope that you get the right things. And mm. they actually tried to turn it in, into a game by putting in strategic <laughs> fucking like uh, underlords with each with their secret powers. And yep. while in the first update, when the underlord came, you could choose their spells and you made it into a real game. And the community is like, no hate it bring back the slot machine it's fucking crazy the whole thing's crazy and this is all at the same time where they said they don't like artifact because of rng they literally treated a game that is only rng as their main complaint oh fuck there's one thing i learned about video games never give people what they want mm -hmm. give them what you know they'll like that's it <laughs> fuck me i'm uh, still mad about artifact no 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 but they're bringing it back can it be saved <laughs> Are, are, are they bringing it back? Yeah. I, <sighs> Didn't you know? You must oh, know, know this. I know, but I'm yeah. saying Oh, that okay, right. You're, you're fucking with me. I was going to say, I expected you to know this. Like, I've never said anything about this, but I'm having a very hard time getting into Artifact 2 because okay. I think that it is dumbed down. It is not the Dota 2 of card games. It is a card game with Dota 2 characters. And I'm trying to learn to love it. I really am. I have a lot of sunk costs <laughs> as an yeah. Artifact fan, but I don't know. I'm having a hard time. I, I legitimately love the first Artifact. And that's very hard to come to terms with that you're an idiot. Um, it's hard to come to terms with you're the 1.1% that enjoyed something and 99% of people didn't. And I think I, I just have come to terms with it that I have a really weird, stupid idea of what is fun. And that, yeah. for me, is Artifact 1. So it's tough because you don't back. really know whether you're like an intellectual and you're enjoying something like El Topo or if you're <laughs> a moron and you're enjoying something like Shogun. Exactly. Yeah, I totally get it, right? Because like, <laughs> I'm, I'm in the minority, so am I a fucking genius or am I a fucking moron? Yeah, it's <laughs> really That's tough. my life every day. <laughs> but it's usually a moron, my friend. Mm. It's very well, sad. Uh, well, well, we, we get to... We get to sort of uh, start wrapping it up now. I've kept you sure. uh, long enough, but uh, big announcement for you uh, recently. Uh, oh, that, your, yeah. your penis works. Yes. Con like, I had no idea. Congratulations. Yes. Thank um, you. No, you're actually, it's going to be did, a father. Uh, 
we got purged to surrogate. So uh, thank you. I purge. saw you type that on Reddit, and I think, geez, no. it, it must be outrageous being your wife and reading things. <laughs> Like Luckily it, for my wife, be. she doesn't she don't watch any of my shit. She oh, finds it very God. annoying. Like, so. it, like, it, it, <laughs> you know, I seriously like. I hope the divorce is coming. So I hope you're She'll preening up know. the shit. I hope you're preening <laughs> up the shit. Because one day she's just gonna go. I, I really wonder what he does actually, and <laughs> she's gonna go through, and it's like, yeah, I let I let purge breed my wife so <laughs> with with his superior genetics you literally said with his superior genetics and me as a coach my <laughs> ti 25 or something i'm like what is wrong with this guy <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a fucking psycho. yeah this is insane no 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 but uh yes i have a child coming it's uh it's that mm. part you know how like um how uh girls that are in the industry um i've talked to many of them several times they have to keep their relationships uh very secret because yeah. it actually affects the bottom line right because people are like oh my god i don't have a chance with this chick anymore Fucking such gross. is the thing yeah, yeah. Mm. such is the thing about being a dude in gaming you know you start to go bald you start to get fat and you start to have children and then they're like wait a minute this guy isn't isn't one of us anymore <laughs> this is my dad. Why am I watching my dad play video? He's a boomer. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's a fucking boomer. <laughs> so yeah, it's a tough transition, but um, I, I think it'll be fun. I think uh, it's going to be good. A big life thing. Um, personally, don't give a shit about kids, but I am the last of my bloodline and I can't do that to my ancestors. So we had to have a male heir and uh, that's where we're at. So yeah, well, can, yeah oh. I mean, you know, that, that, it's very medieval of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who the fuck wants to grow up? Honestly, yeah, who no, wants no, to no. get married, have a house, have yeah. a kid? The, no, that's the that's the bigger thing. I think like what we do. I think um, that the mindset is like the healthy one is a state of arrested development. It's why I, I see a lot of the older guys that were in at the start divorce now of course you know like yeah. struggling with a bunch of stuff because the world wasn't really ready they, that's what i mean when i said these guys did really sacrifice everything like the ogs at esports i'm not one of those you know no. i came in i'm like second or even maybe even third generation esports mm -hmm. you know those guys really put it all on the line you know divorces businesses bank loans um you know incredible sacrifices they made that we get to feel the benefit of uh but um but yeah i, I think now it's like now it's a bit more accepted it's nice it's a place you can go and live in that state of arrested development you get to be you know they, they use the term man child a lot so if it's a bad thing like who the fuck like you say who the fuck wants a mortgage and a fucking yeah and a, and a nine to five and do you know yeah. what happens when you turn yeah. into an old man and you retire? You fucking die. It's yep. miserable. Who yeah. wants that? And my, my philosophy is keep your youthful vigor for as long as humanly possible until genetics literally says you must have a child or else you will not have one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. what can you do? This is, this, these are golden years, baby. But no, uh, it, it is part of growing up, too. You got to eventually do it. It sucks, but... You, uh, you, you worried about it because um, obviously, you know, parents have to kind of like be around and stuff uh, well, only good parents <laughs> yeah true are you worried about it uh impacting on your ability to be the ubiquitous sir action slacks moving forward I oh uh, i guess we'll see what happens um again like uh, you have to for me i have a really weird personality where i don't particularly enjoy doing stuff after i think that i've been good at it um i always want to try to do something new and hard mm -hmm. so um uh, I think that the good thing about esports is that you don't have to be on in front of camera talent forever. You can always work as behind the scenes. You can always grow new talent, help other talent. And I feel like a, uh, a good person does that. They have their time in the, in the limelight and then they say, okay, it's time for me to help other people. So I'm, I'm imagining that's where my life is going to go. Less in front of talent time, more production of events, more production of content to highlight other people and, see how it goes i mean that's you know normal nine to five job as it gets in esports i esports is a kind of job where nothing is normal but uh, there's jobs like that so we'll see how it goes um i never really liked being on camera really i mean it's like a lot of people don't assume this they think that i'm a very outgoing guy but i am a fucking shut-in as soon as an event is over i skip the after party i go home <laughs> so uh yeah it's a natural progression i think and i'm excited for it man 
Besides, a lot of other boomers did it too. So I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. I, I'm not that you don't interrupt me, dude. Uh, and, and I'm I'm super happy uh, for, for you. And of course, the kid that gets to have you as a fucking dad, which is hey! gonna be. No, a, you're not. A, you don't know the torture that I'm putting <laughs> this kid through, man. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna tell him Dota's real. <laughs> <laughs> fuck with this kid his whole life. Um, but like the, the last question is this. Um, you know, obviously you've alluded to it a little bit there where you're talking about maybe moving upstairs and, and stuff one day. Any Anything that maybe would uh, tickle your fancy, so to speak, in terms of, like, another game? Because, I listen, oh. if I could, like, have you do a CS event, like, I, I would 100% do that. Like, I mean, I, you oh don't need God. to know much about our game. It's shooty, shooty, bang, bang. It, it, Man, make head, boom. Yes. Yeah, exactly. There you go. You've already got it, right? Um, and I, I think you could do like some, you know, because a big, uh, some of us in CS do take ourselves a little bit too fucking seriously. Mm, yeah. And th- your best quality is your game is fuck. I mean, I saw a clip on the top of the subreddit the other day where it was like, you were doing a fucking like uh, anime intro and like singing <laughs> like, a, what, like a girl with fucking like kawaii eyes or some shit. I was like, fucking slacks oh, out of control. No. Like, Someone needs to stage a motherfucking intervention for this dude. So, yeah. I, I, so are there any games you'd like to bring that unique style of entertainment? Jesus. I don't know, man. It's hard. I, I literally am a virus. Um, the first time that people hear me, it is the natural reaction would be like, what the hell is that voice? Fucking Mickey Mouse over here. Jesus. And it, it grows on you like some kind of horrible tumor. That's like what I do. So transitioning to another game, especially Counter-Strike, the eSport of Chad's, would it be the hardest fucking thing? <laughs> you can imagine me coming out and these guys like, Jay, is that, what the hell is that? Uh, it would be tough. And again, Dota 2 was not Dota 2. I don't want to take too much credit for it, but yeah. it was not that before me. Like, I have ruined this game in a way by putting out this stupid shit. I mean, back at TI3, TI4, it was very much button up, everyone in their suits and ties, and then it, it, I ruined things. I have a black thumb, Richard. You shouldn't try to get me on anything else. I already killed one game. Everything I touch dies. Uh, but I'll buy that for a second. I, I think, if anything, actually, uh, the, the less stuffy, the better. A lot of these esports. I'm glad that we're not wearing suits on broadcasts anymore. Yeah. I think you know. I, I think we we were way too content to live in the shadow of mainstream sports for for too mm-hmm. long, and it hampered our growth a little bit because people looked at it and it was almost like a parody. Yeah, of, you know, and it was and, awful. Yeah, we we weren't ourselves, you know. Yeah, and that's that's the strength of esports is that we're just people. I mean, there's no like fucking Paris Hiltons here that have been grooming us to become esports movie stars. We're just dudes that play games, and that's like the beauty of it. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people have gotten more into that sense. But other games, that's always been a challenge and something that I've wanted to do. I love trying to learn new communities and stuff and getting that challenge, but it would be extremely hard because of the grating voice. You might not know this about me, but I actually went to school for psychology and oh, yeah. neuroscience and i was going to be a therapist and um i had to change my careers because all of my people that i practiced on said that my grading demeanor and voice actually made them more stressed so <laughs> yeah really- it is tough it is that hard can't be a true story it's a true story we'd have people laying down telling me about it be like so what are you what's stressing you out and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not good so yes, uh, it would be difficult, but I would love to work behind the scenes and, and grow other talent and inject some fun. Because I feel like, as you said, esports a lot of times lose themselves along the way and try to be something that they're not. We're a bunch of fucking nerdy gamers. That's how it should be. Absolutely. Well, look, it, it's been a pleasure. Are there, is there any uh, final message uh, you, you'd like to end on? Anything you think... Uh... Absolutely. Fuck you, Thorin. I know you're watching it. Fuck you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, man. Uh, big fan of you. Big fan of what you guys do. Uh, thank you so much for being our, uh, a foil for Valve for us to be able to compare stuff. Look at what Counter Strike's doing. <laughs> but, I know, man. Imagine, yeah. imagine you guys thinking the fucking grass is greener. Holy shit. <laughs> That's an eye opener. That's exactly what it is, man. Yeah. But no, uh, obviously, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, big respect to you and everything that you guys do. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Keep absorbing content. Content is what it's all about. That's my life. That's esports. That's what changes us from traditional fucking buttoned up, stuffy ass TV bullshit. So uh, keep watching podcasts like this. And thanks for listening through this entire nightmare with my uh, terrifying uh, demeanor. <laughs>
<laughs> well, listen, it, it was a pleasure for me, and I hope it was a pleasure for all of you guys watching as well. That's Sir Action. Slack's been wanting to do this for a long time. I think he's a really cool guy and a great, uh, great talent. Would be welcome in any eSport. Make sure you give him a follow on his Twitter, which is definitely on the overlay if Sam's done his job. Uh, and there you go. That was this episode of The Richard Lewis Show. Uh, make sure you tune into the next one. I have no idea who the fucking guest will be because I don't really plan these in advance. There's no rhyme or reason to them. That's life. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Take care of yourselves. See you next time. You know what I forgot to mention? Fuck. I, I said I was going to put it in the interview and I've just remembered. Let's my, do it. Right. So my coach uh, mm -hmm. is a guy called The Original Feeder. Right. And he, um, we met in a game like years ago. I played about 400 hours of dope, didn't know what I was doing, didn't know what pulling was, and walking around like, <laughs> me ogre, me stun, you know, like, <laughs> and he, he was raging at me in a game and uh, saying, like, you're a fucking, you know, idiot. You don't know how to fucking play. And I'm going, like, yeah, who the fuck are you, you silly cunt? And then somebody recognized my voice on the server and went, are you Richard Lewis? And I was like, fuck, you know, the things I've said, the things <laughs> recording this, I'm fucked, right? So I had to be nice. Now, so I went, oh, listen, yeah, could you, you know, give me like a few pointers then, I guess, dude. Sorry if I've been fucking up your game. He's going, nah, oh. it's okay, man. So he started teaching me the basics, like how to pull and how to support an yeah. and how to do this stuff. So anyway, we, we forged a, a friendship that's lasted many years now. And he's, you know, brought me up to, you know, 3K standards or whatever, you know. Hey. Um, uh, although although we we did somehow manage to boost an account to ancient with me on it, but whatever. I'm, I'm playing with <laughs> playing with all of those guys, you know, like playing in five stacks. But anyway, by, by the by, he said to tell you he's queued into you three times and beat you every time. Oh, isn't that cute? And he Good said you have you. to call him daddy. Oh, good job, Daddy. Yeah, and you know, I haven't played ranked in three years, baby. I played unranked Dota. Why don't you write me a tweet about how you defeated me at 3 a.m. and on Who gives a shit, bro? Any that. day, 1v1 at Roche, I'll be there. Fuck. You now, nah, but I'm sure it's a good game. <laughs> nah, nah, he's a uh, he's a cool guy. He's a bit of a bit of a rage head, so it probably is me awesome. too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I have heard. Um, so anyway, hey. look, uh, I'll let I'll let you get on with the rest of your day. 